<clears throat> okay, we are now online, so. <clears throat> so, okay. mm -hmm. uh, good day, everybody from different parts of the world. You are welcome to Art Sports Scholarship, Art Sports International Scholarship Forum. So, we are welcome to another section of our scholarship webinars. So today, for today's webinar series, we are having writing statements of purpose for graduate school application. Writing statement of purpose for graduate school application. As every one of us knows that we have already around the application period for most schools in the United States of America, in Europe and different parts of the world. So our um, guest speaker for today is scholar Abdul Hadi Kobiu. So it's our guest speaker for today for writing statements of purpose for graduate school application. So um, once again, I'm Akimu Mishala Abib. I'll be the one to be moderating today's program. These are just the agendas of today's program. The first one, which is the welcomes of the attendee from different parts of the world in which I've done. So the next agenda should be the HISF platform. People who do hear about what is called HISF, HISF. HISF is just called Hotspot International Scholars Forum. So under this platform, we have different WhatsApp group. We have HISF WhatsApp group from one to 11. We have the Associate Scholars Group. We have the Formal Research Group 1 and 4. We are on LinkedIn, on LinkedIn using Hotspots ISF. Also, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook. We also have our Google Drive, which consists of different kind of materials, like GRE materials, TOEFL materials, IELTS materials and different SOP, personal statements, CV, cover letter, and motivation letter. We also have our website, which is the hotspotisf.com as our website. We also have our YouTube channel in which we are using right now, which is www.youtube.com. So this is the link for our channel. So that's just a brief introduction about HISF. So the next agenda for today should be the introduction of our guest speaker. So our guest speaker is a scholar, is a great scholar indeed. So I'm just going to read a brief profile of our guest speaker right now. So our guest speaker for today is scholar Kobiu Abdul Hadi, popularly known as Somato Adidas. Scholar Kobiu Abdul Hadi is a doctoral researcher in the interdisciplinary program of genetics, bioinformatics, and computational biology at Virginia Tech, the United States of America. His current research interests include vector biology, genome addicting, functional genomics, bioinformatics, and computational biology. Before this period, he has received his national diploma, popularly known as National ND in Nigerian in Agricultural Technology at the Polytechnic Ibadan, after which he proceeded to Obafemi Awolowo University for a degree in agriculture, specifically animal science. Shortly after submitting his undergraduate project, he was one of the 20 African students chosen for the summer program in animal science and animal science and biotechnology at Jongbuk National University in South Korea. In addition, he possesses a double master degree in animal breeding and genetics from the University of Göttingen in Germany and the Norwegian Institute of Life Science, Norway, under the Erasmus Mundus Scholarship. Furthermore, he is a recipient of several scholarships, both local and international scholarships. Some of the scholarships include, but are not limited to Abdul Kabir Foundation Scholarship, the Decentral Junior Scholarship, New York, the Japanese Government Scholarship, popularly known as MEST, the Erasmus Mundus Joint Master Degree of European Master in Animal Breeding and Genetics. 
The highly competitive BBSR sponsored PhD studentship of football system at the Queen Mary University in Belfast. In order to continue with the view, few, uh, brief profile of our speaker, over the years, it has also actively mentored ambitious prospective graduate students and scholarship enthusiasts, helping several in one way or another, actualize their dream for securing prestigious scholarship in North America, Europe, and Asia. He also shared scholarship opportunities across platforms from time to time, especially on the Hotspots International Scholars Forum. This is just a brief profile of our guest speaker for today. In the person of scholar Abdul Hadi Kubiu, popularly known as Sumato uh, Adidas. So, without wasting much of our time, we are going to the main business of the day, in which our topic is basically writing statement of purpose for graduate school's application. So, um, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm having a bit of a problem with sharing the slides. Oh, okay, oh. share screen, right? Yes, click on present. Yeah, okay. I clicked. Okay. Yeah, I think. Guest. Yeah. Uh, can, can you see my screen? Yes, <clears throat> I've already added it to the stream. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> uh, thank you so much uh, for having me here today. Um, I'm happy to uh, be back in one way or the other uh, to also help uh, prospective applicants uh, in their graduate school applications journey. So, yeah, um, Abdul Hadi Kubil, as uh, the moderator has already said, and, and thank you for the beautiful introduction. So, I will be talking about the uh, demystifying. Uh, the statement of purpose uh, writing uh, in graduate school application. Like, how do we go about uh, writing a uh, state statement of purpose uh, to make it a strong and competitive one that would land us scholarships? So, I think this might be uh, a bit redundant. <laughs> Uh, as he already introduced me. So I will just briefly go over this. So I started my journey uh, at the Polytechnic in Baden. So with agricultural technology and moved to OAU uh, for my bachelor in animal sciences. And then I got the opportunity to uh, spent some months in South Korea uh, at Chumbuk National University. Uh, if you check this name, you might not see this name because they used to check their name. You 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 might see it as Jumbuk, as in J, Jumbuk National University. So they change it. So, and then, so yeah, for my master's, the first year was done in uh, Germany and then the second uh, in Norway, and then here I am now. I'm currently on my PhD uh, in uh, genetics, bioinformatics, and computational biology. So, um, so I hope I won't be boring you with all my talks today, and I hope uh, each and every one uh, of, of you uh, that attend this session would uh, gain one or two things, uh, insightful things that would help them in their application. So, 
the statement of purpose, uh, when we talk about the statement of purpose, it is one of the most critical uh, parts or uh, section of application package uh, to graduate school. And as it gives you the opportunity to actually express yourself explicitly on why the school should be giving you funds for your graduate education or for your advanced degree. And also, not only uh, does it give you the uh, opportunity to express you, it gives the admission committee uh, the opportunity to also uh, have some impression about you, uh, about your capability, what you can do, uh, what you've done, uh, the motivation, what uh, triggers uh, or what drives you, what influence your decision in applying uh, for the uh, graduate program and also for, for that, uh, for advanced degree and for the program itself. And then also your resourcefulness, uh, despise, as we all know, most of us that uh, come from uh, uh, the global south, uh, which we are hindered by so many things. How resourceful are you uh, to navigate the murky water uh, in the global south and achieve academic ex excellence, uh, acquire research, uh, experience and some other things and then your potential uh, to actually succeed in the graduate school your potential of being a refined scientist uh, in the field and your potential of contributing uh, uh, to the body of knowledge and or, and advancing uh, the field uh, so and finally uh, it as you can see very well, uh, it could make or break your chances of uh, getting into your dream, dream program. Why did I say this? I think you are going to see as we move through the presentation. So as we know that statement of purpose is not the only uh, letters or write-up that we uh, make uh, during the process of graduate school application. Uh, there are some other uh, letters that we write, like that they have us to write, like the uh, pers personal statements, uh, motivation letter, and also uh, this, what we are talking about, the statement of purpose. So uh, here, I'll be giving you uh, my experiences uh, from the times I started applying for uh, scholarships and also some case studies, some examples of uh, from other folks uh, who have gotten into top group programs and schools across the world. So here, uh, uh, there are similarities and differences between uh, these letters that we uh, write for graduate school applications. Yes, there are some salient differences, but uh, I want to point out that one, the SOP, the Statement of Purpose and Motivation Letter, are the same uh, because one school might ask you to write a statement of purpose. And then another school might ask you uh, to write a motivation letter. So uh, in my own little experience, I've not seen a case where you are asked to write both of this. It's either you are, you are asked to write motivation letter in the personal statement or personal statement and statement of purpose. So these two are together, they are the same thing. 
it shows that uh, they have these different names. We, they are called by different schools. So as you can see, the personal statements, uh, it deals with your yourself, your background, where you're coming from, who are you? Uh, and then if you look at the uh, statement of purpose or motivation letter, it deals with uh, the, 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 the triggers, mm? the motivation for an advanced degree and also the program you are actually applying to. So, and then if you also look at the personal statements, uh, there are, it contains personal narratives, uh, personal narratives, stories, conditions, and then the statement of purpose gives you the, uh, the state of things, how you are, your current state, uh, what you want to do in the future, in the field, uh, given that you are accepted into the program and then what you could do to uh, advance the field uh, in your own capacity. So, and when the personal statement also uh, deals with your past, how your past experiences influences uh, your decisions, uh, how it's changed the narratives of your life, uh, how it changed the course of your life, how it influenced uh, some uh, key turning points in your life. So, and then, you know, like, like I said, the SOP is just a uh, motivation letter. Uh, it's just to what drives you? What do you have? What do you process? Like, uh, what are you coming? him uh, with, uh, and then, uh, like I said, also personal statement contains some incidences you narrate, uh, sometimes people talk about their health issues, how it affected their grades, uh, well, some, some financial constraints and some other things, but how you were able to actually uh, bounce back and then uh, even have a very uh, sterling performance afterwards and some other things. But this one, you have to give the committee, the admission committee, the review committee, uh, the impression uh, on your research uh, that you know how to carry out research, that you have passion for the research that, that you do uh, uh, that in your own little way you've been able to contribute uh, in one way or the other uh, to to the field. Uh, there are some other differences, uh, but <clears throat> as we go on, you are going to see uh, uh, what is uh, peculiar to the motivation letter and SOP, so which we are actually going to talk about here. Then. The next question is, what, how do we start writing the SOP? So yeah, starting your SOP, it could be very, very overwhelming. Uh, I've been there several times. So when I started my journey of scholarship, how do you feel when you start, when you want to start writing your SOP? Do you feel like this? Frustrated? Don't know where to start? All like this? You are weak. Yes. So, so many of us <laughs> have been like that. <laughs> weak uh, and then frustrated. And you know, where do I even start? So, and I hope by the end of this uh, session, uh, you won't. Uh, find yourself uh, in this kind of situation uh, again. So how do we construct a strong 
statement of purpose. So I'm going to give uh, some uh, what I call I can call templates, though it is not hedged on stones. You can choose how you start, but it should it should uh, it should follow some kind of a uh, concepts uh, taken from here. So I'm going to narrate. I'm, sp I'm going to spend some uh, a lot of time here uh, talking about each part of the SOP. So the first one here is the introduction. So the introduction. What I mean by the introduction here is not introducing yourself. I am Kobiu Abdulhadi, blah blah blah. I'm from uh, Oyo State. I'm from Nigeria. Blah blah blah. I'm not the likes. It is not about that introduction. The introduction of your motivation letter should contain what. Triggers. What are your triggers? What are the drivers? What drives you? What motivates you to want to apply for an advanced degree in graduate school? What are those things that actually influenced your decision uh, to want to apply to graduate school? I will give you some couple of examples. Uh, and like I said before, I will give you some personal stories uh, when I started. So, and you try and see uh, that uh, we all have our little beginnings and you should not despise your own little beginnings. Uh, but we must const constantly improve on ourselves and try to uh, get in touch with those who could help. So, number one, uh, about what triggers. It could be the situation of things in the field of study and how it relates to your community, how it relates to your country, how it relates to your continent. Let me give you an example. From my own field now, uh, let, me say, let me say my previous field in animal sciences. We, there are, you, you all know we have various problems uh, in, uh, in agriculture, in livestock industry. For example, low productivity. Uh, we have we have some livestock animals that are hardy. They are strong. Uh, they they are very strong, but they are less productive. When you compare a a, a cow that is giving milk in the in this side of the world in the West, giving over forty liters in a day, and compare it with uh, has that barely gives two to four liters. You see that it's a kind of it is a very very big problem. Uh, we have so many others. They are you know their productivity, the health also, you know, uh, re re resilience. You know, in the field of, of uh, these uh, infested areas with such a fly that causes. Uh, uh, trichodontomiasis and so, some other things like that. That's one example. So you've identified a problem in the country or in the community. What is the problem? The problem of uh, unimproved animals, the problems of low productivity. Okay, what, what is the connection between your motivation, this low productivity in animals and, and applying to graduate school. Number one is if there is enough protein being protein in produced by these animals, uh, we won't have uh, people 
uh, dying from malnutrition, you know, from hunger and some other avoidable uh, diseases. So, I, and the level of poverty will also be decreased. So you, you can see how I'm connecting uh, my own trigger that I brought in now. How I'm connecting it with how it affects people in my community. You can hear, you can also bring up stats, statistics uh, about uh, maybe the number of people, uh, the required uh, animal uh, protein uh, by the FAO or th that is pre prescribed by the FAO. And the one that Nigeria is actually muting now. Are you getting my point now? So the, the one we are meeting and the standard we're supposed to be meeting. So, and the consequences of the triggers of the drivers. So what are the consequences of the drivers and what has the government of the day done? I will also say something about that uh, at the later part of, latter part of, the, uh, of this presentation. So what have they done and what do you think needs to be done uh, to actually uh, improve the situation? And then you that you can then come in that okay, it is on this note that I believe a program in this 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 uh, in animal breeding and genetics in genetics and breeding would give me the necessary or the required knowledge uh, insights to actually contribute in improving this situation you mentioned above. So by you you can uh, bring uh, your proposed solution uh, improved uh, uh, breeding of animals with higher productivity and some other things like that. Then so that's actually one one uh, focus like that where you could actually start. So as you all have different fields. So you can start with what is the, uh, the, the pain in the butt of the country in your field. You can start with that. So, and how those uh, things are affected uh, people in your community, in, in the country, on the continent, and even the world over. Another one uh, could be how the science I'm talking you know, for 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 people in STEM now, how science or life sciences had actually uh, improved uh, humanity and helped uh, to uh, safeguard the lives of people, animals, and the environment, and some other things. For example, the current uh, monster. Uh, terrorizing the uh, the world, uh, the global pandemic of COVID. So, how the 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 research community, the science community, have been able to uh, to rise to the occasion uh, and uh, curtail uh, in one way or the other, uh, so to prevent a kind of a, uh, a black death and some other uh, uh, pandemic that's claimed many lives uh, in the past. So, and how that triggers uh, your, or influenced your decision to want to study, number one, maybe biomedical sciences uh, or biomedical engineering and some other things like that. So that's another uh, focus. So uh, there's, uh, no, like, like, like I said before, it's it's not etched on stone. Uh, it's you can start from where you uh, deem fit. But mind you, let me let me reiterate that again. Mind you, your introduction 
has a lot more, much more influence on whether you are going to get a favorable decision. If you start with something drab, I said it again, I say it again. Uh, if you start with something drab, not you if you start with something drab, something not uh, catchy, something not you know not enticing, then you you might be at risk of you know because these folks they read so many statements from tens to hundreds of applicants and they have little time uh, to make the decision whether you should be accepted or not. It's like going for a visa interview in the US embassy. You only have like one to two minutes to convince the, the visa officer to either give you the visa or to reject it. So your introduction matters a lot. So don't start with something drab, something on inviting. Start with a hook. Start with a hook. A hook that, that will give them the, the feeling of wanting to know more about what you want to write in the whole of your letter. So I think that will suffice for the introduction. So and the introduction could, uh, could be from uh, it could be a paragraph or two, so it depends on the instructions, if any, uh, from the program or your school. Then the second thing uh, that you are supposed to have in your statement of purpose uh, or motivation letter is what you are bringing to the table. Uh, let me remind, let me give you an example of uh, in this. When I started my journey, I started applying for international scholarship as far back as 2014. Yeah, as I can remember. So in this part, you know, you no know, you know experience, nothing. You know, I just, you know, I just want to study abroad and all the likes. So then you tend to want to use uh, PT. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. So you, you, you tend to want to use PT, like uh, here, uh, I'm this, I'm that. Uh, like you are trying to show your sorry situation, how uh, things are bad for you, uh, blah, 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 and all the likes. But if you are using that here, you will be doing yourself a great disservice. It, this is not personal statements. And even in the personal statement, there is a limit to that too. So, so what, what you are bringing to the table, you are supposed to show it here. So for example, in, at your undergrad, what, what have you acquired? What have you amassed together? You know, what experience are you coming with? What skills do you have? What skills do you have? So your, uh, for those people that also have masters, also your research experience, what have you done? You should be able to uh, briefly explain your research, what you've done uh, in few lines, starting from your motivation, uh, motivation for the study, uh, the, the methods that you used, and then also, the results you get from your from, from, from your research, and finally, the applications or implications of your of your research in the field, you you must be able to do that convincingly. So, and also, what are the preparations that you've had uh, coming uh, like into the program, like based from courses you've taken, what are the courses you've taken so far so that are related uh, to the program? For example, uh, for people in data analytics, machine learning, and some other things, uh, you might want to mention uh, some relevant courses 
that you've taken and how, not only mention them, and how you've made use of these courses, how you've implemented uh, the, 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 the deliverables or uh, the teachings, the knowledge you've gained from these courses. So how you've been able to implement them, you have to uh, state that. Uh, I will give you an example. So in one of my applications, my PhD applications, uh, I was uh, uh, precisely uh, the, the one I got, the one of the PhD of us I got, uh, the one in the UK, uh, the food biosystem, uh, it's, it's, it was on uh, using uh, genomics, data, big data, uh, machine learning, uh, supervised and unsupervised and deep learning uh, to actually uh, connect some data and then find some 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 things on the management, how the management practices, uh, the productivity, uh, and some other things on livestock animals in the UK. So then, when I was writing my 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 essay, I was able to tell them that. In one of my courses, uh, which was high throughput phenotyping, uh, I am I did a small project, a small class project, on a one year uh, data uh, from a milky machine, so on mastitis detection index. So mastitis detection index is, is just a tool uh, the dairy industry use uh, to detect. Uh, to raise alarm, they set they, they code some sensors to raise alarm when they are detecting some patterns in the milk that has, that are being collected. So, but generally it is not known what this uh, mastitis detection in this contains. So what I did was that I use machine learning uh, with the head of uh, linear combinations of several phenotypes up to uh, 60, uh, and then predict uh, the most important uh, phenotypes or variables that are being collected on the farm that, that are constituents of the MDI. And that could actually, one, give the breeding industry what to actually improve upon to bring down mastitis uh, incidences in the dairy industry. So, because mastitis is one of the uh, Achilles E, Achilles E in the dairy industry, and also inform better management decision. So, those are the two key things that that those that the result I got could actually do to the dairy industry. So, I was able to uh, express myself. It's a cause. This is the knowledge I gained, and this was what I was able to do with it. So, and then training that you have, maybe internship training, you know, and some other things. You have relevant experiences, relevant work experience. Uh, you have to also uh, say that and give examples, give examples. As you are going to see uh, from the case studies, we are going to uh, go through. So, and this uh, this one, this part could actually be also one to two paragraphs. Uh, so, but it's it's not mandatory. So, it's just based on your experience. So, people have a lot of experiences uh, that are related to the field or the program they are applying to. So, you have to find a way to uh, look at if you are restricted by the word can't, so you have to look at the most important ones and then put them in your SOP. So the third way uh, is, I hope I made myself clear here, is uh, why you are, why this program? Why this institution? Why are you applying to this program? Why not other programs in other places? Why this institution? Uh, uh, also, during my uh, 
my during the course of my applications for PhD, I had some a couple of interviews in which uh, some folks, some lecturers, you know, inter intervening committee or the admission committee were saying that some some applicants, what they what they say is, you know, they they say what they already know about the 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 the, the program or the school. Uh, your school is one of the top top ten schools in the world. Is this is that? No, <laughs> these are these are these are information that's that's already available. It's, don't don't try to like uh, put some feathers on their car in that area. So there are some uh, specific areas you have to actually look at. Uh, for example. How is the structure of the program? The structure of the program you are applying to. How is the structure? So how you know some programs they have a very well structured uh, program for their graduate students. For example, uh, as we know that uh, graduate school is uh, very very uh, uh, demanding and rigorous. So do they have uh, any mental health? Uh, student welfare system, uh, you know, uh, to to check on students. Uh, students will have uh, difficulties with their research. What are they doing for them? And some other things like that. And is there something of such in the program? If there is, you have to make mention of that. It's, it's, it shows you've done your due diligence. Uh, in searching and looking at what the program offers. So, and also, uh, there are some research facilities that are not found in so, so many places. Uh, research facilities, uh, you have to name them. Uh, it is not enough uh, to state that uh, state of the heart facilities, blah, blah, blah. So it is not that enough. You have to actually state what are those facilities uh, that are available that will help you to uh, to uh, to do your research very well and accomplish uh, your goal of PhD uh, of being a refined scientist uh, or masters or of being a research uh, a refined scientist uh, in the future. Uh, do they have uh, uh, any faculty of interest that you have? Uh, that's because you must have looked at the program website very well. What are the faculty? What are, I mean, what are the researchers or the professors that are doing something in line with your interest? So after you, you've shown your interest, you have to tell them that, okay, like uh, this professor uh, that works on this program, on this on this topic, like this, like this, uh, there it is in line with my own interest. So, and some other special programs that they have in the uh, in the in the program and the in institution. So, uh, it is very very important. Uh, to uh, to make mention of that, uh, not saying that uh, they are top 100, top 200, or top 10 in the world. It's not enough. So then uh, the next thing is uh, you must, like I said, from the uh, comparison. So what are the <clears throat> what are the uh, your career goals? Sorry, excuse me. So what are your career goals? Like uh, in stating your career goals, you have to be also be explicit. So uh, your short term career goal, uh, though, let me give you uh, this. Uh, it's, it's not, uh, it's not always clear cut. Like, you know, having a clear picture of what you want to do in the future. But it, it is good to have some kind of direction first. 
So, so as to uh, show the inclusion committee that this 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 guy, uh, this person is you know this individual has something uh, is actually high. So, but it's not really clear. Though I've seen many people that have written that I want to become a professor, blah blah blah, and at the end of their PhD they go to industry. So and some some people that were, that were telling me that they want to go to industry, they they later stayed in the academia. So it depends, but you have to have uh, a clear uh, uh, a kind of a, a preliminary goals that you want to achieve. So and you have to state it in in this order: your short term goals, uh, your mid and also long term goals. So, and then uh, lastly, then you have to do a kind of a, a brief uh, recap and then conclude your statement of purpose. Like, okay, so you will see from, uh, from the examples I'll be giving, uh, you have, from these examples, I've taken some permissions to share some of the materials from some folks. Uh, so, then we look at some case studies after this, and I hope I uh, I was able to explain uh, all these uh, components uh, very well. So uh, the next one is uh, is just the case studies. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm not allowed to actually show this the, this person's name, so that's the reason why I had to block it out. So. Can can you see? Uh, uh, can you see it? Yes, yes, yes. I can see it perfectly. Okay. So, yeah. So, this this is the a statement of purpose for a program at Stanford University, and this person actually got in. Uh, is uh, the person is currently uh, a PhD candidate in Stanford. So. Uh, if you look at how this person started, uh, so, but can you, sir, can you try to zoom it out so that people can see it very well? Oh, oh, zoom, zoom. It's uh, actually on the oh, uh, it's on. It's mm. already on the display now. Like, okay, okay, okay. No I don't problem. know how I can. It's already on. Zoom. Okay, it's already on on this slide. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah, so but I can read read some parts out. Like okay. the way this person started, he said, frequently my parents ask me what I do during all the time in the laboratory since they struggled to graduate high school and did not attend college. I tried my best to explain my research to them using words they are familiar with. So if you look at the the way uh, this person started, uh, he he gave a a, a few glimpses as to his background, so where he's coming from. So, and I start by describing that the functions developed in our body are primarily due to the tiny instrument called proteins and compare the functions to music in instruments. For a violin to play beautifully, it must have the correct shape. So there was a protein to perform a specific task. If so, something goes wrong with its shape, a violin might produce an unpleasant sound and ruin a concept why a protein might lose its functions and develop a disease. So if you look at this, it gives you a trait that is being looked for or had in a prospective graduate applicant. What is that? Good communication. A good communication is needed in all graduate education. And this is what this guy had actually given the admission committee that he could explain is research to a layman for better understanding. 
So uh, it said it is an oversimplified explanation, but it is clear and palpable to them. For me, the role of a scientist goes beyond production of knowledge, but it is but it all but also it must address the issue on how to communicate scientific knowledge efficiently. So, like you said, like, like I said before, the knowledge uh at the of communication, uh proper communication, good communication, efficient and adequate communication is very, very important, and um, which uh this applicant actually uh showed. So and I learned from the biology high school teacher who was pursuing his PhD in biology at the time and sparked in me the ambition of being a scientist. Look at the driver. So understanding the scientific method and fundamental knowledge are pivotal for daily life, promoting critical thinking that assists learning and possibility of deciding and opining about technologies and health Issue. So I strongly believe that going to graduate school will improve my skills both as a generator of knowledge and a scientific communicator in the field of molecular and cell biology, and it will help me expand my knowledge to other systems. So here, uh, as you can see, uh, the applicant actually uh, demonstrated uh, a very good um, clear course uh, communication and uh, some of one of the attributes of a good uh, perspective of even a graduate student how to communicate your ideas to to people not in your field effectively so he was able to show that and then talked about his trigger what triggered it and how he wants to contribute uh, to the uh, field. Uh, so uh, this uh, part of what I've explained from the previous slide. So then he started with his journey in his bachelor. He talked about his research experience. So like I said, from the second point from the previous slide, you, you talk about your, your research experience. And what I've seen over the years is uh, many people from our, from our place, especially from Nigeria, we tend to underrate the research that we do in undergraduate study. Some people say, ah, I, ah, I don't think that one is worthy of mentioning. No, you, it's, it's a research. It's a research you have to, you, you have to present to people. So it is it is very, very important. You don't need to underrate what uh, you've done. So in as much in one way is one way or the other is connected uh, to the program you are applying to. If, if it's not connected, uh, what are the, the the experience you gained that is needed in the program you are applying to? That's another thing. It might be that you know you 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 obtain some computational knowledge during that study, data analysis, data collection, and some other things. And these are what are needed in graduate school. If you can also uh, try to point that out, it will really help you. So this person, uh, I, I won't be able to read everything, but it started with how he uh he started his uh, research. Uh, at under the supervision of a professor and uh, described the focus of the research uh, on with that professor. So he explained explicitly and how they were able to uh, finish the research and produce a, a, a paper on that research. So and also, it is good to have publication very, very uh, good, and it increases your chances of getting uh, accepted. But uh, not having it, not having a publication or a, a peer-reviewed journal uh, will, will not uh, hinder 
your chances of getting admitted. If you have a very strong experience, and that's the reason why I used to tell folks that if you know that you don't you don't you don't have publications, you have a good grade, good grades are not enough. What are the skills? What are the needed skills in the field? Do you possess them? If you possess those skills, you have to demonstrate how you made use or how you make use of the these skills. Very, very important. So uh, having first class is not enough. Uh, do you possess the skills? I've seen so many cases where people with second class or power division uh, clinching uh, scholarship are heard of people that have first class. So based on their experience, because you cannot just sit uh, on the premise of having a first class and then not furthering uh, your efforts to actually learn what is uh, being needed uh, currently in the field. Uh, so it is very, very important. So it was able to uh, explain uh, to them the research uh, how he, how they conducted it and how he was able to they were he was able to be part of uh, the authorship of a paper from that research. So then, uh, from his conclusion or the latter part of his uh, his uh, his statement of purpose. He said, my previous experience illustrated my strong scientific background in different approaches involved in molecular, cell, and chemical biology, and my ability to commit into a long-lasting project. And I feel strongly confident. Uh, I would want to use, I, I am convinced, yeah, so that I'm so for, <clears throat> confident about uh, for further challenging research I'm going to face during graduate school. So here, uh, after illustrating uh, his research experiences and what he was able to get from those experiences, be it publications and so and the results, then he said, summarizing everything, his research experiences uh, or his background uh, portray him as a strong candidate uh, who has knowledge in this field of molecular, cellular, and chemical biology, and his ability to commit to a long-term project because he was working on he worked on several projects during his undergrad, and he also had the opportunity to actually have a research uh something like a research internship in uh in, at stanford he had a research inst internship at, at, at stanford so he said i aspire to be a, a super scientist uh this is a part of uh the goal uh the career goal so in the field of cell and molecular biology who can generate scientific knowledge without leaving the essential mission of scientific communication behind, uh, eager to learn from different techniques and to expand my knowledge to different systems. I believe I'm an ideal candidate for a biology pro program at Stanford uh, University as it will facilitate my, my personal growth and preparation uh, to be a successful scientist. Then he went on uh, to talk about uh, those whom he, 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 is, he had seen that have different line of research interest with that whose research interest align with his. So he said, I feel uh, very enthusiastic about the research in the field of protein folding. As George, this doctor, uh, professor studies on proteosis selection and all the likes. And also he mentioned some, uh, some other professors too. So whom he had discussed uh, his uh, research with. So uh, what I want to point out here is it is very, very important to 
uh, uh, to make mention of uh, some few people. Uh, and don't just do name dropping. Uh, name dropping is just saying that uh, I want to work with this uh, professor, with this professor, with this professor. What are they doing? And how are they related to your interests, uh, to your research interests that you, you say you want to do? So it is very, very important that you uh, you you discuss that or you, you write that. So uh, I'm extremely confident about the contribution of biology program we have in my scientific career and how, and I look forward to dedicating myself to explain it as skillful scientist. So like it was able to tell how the program will contribute to its development and what is also bringing. So not, so it, it's not only talking about what the school can do for him. He talked about what he's bringing uh, to the school, like with his wealth of experience. So the next one is another case study. So uh, this one, uh, it's made, I think I've shared it on ISL before. Uh, is another person that gained admission to computer science to study at Stanford. And uh, I think it's available, you can get this on ISF. So the person uh, started with, it is important to find algorithms that run efficiently on large data sets. Since many applications require large amount of data, biologists have a fish, have to fish through billions of base pairs to pry information out of human genome. The square kilometer array of telescope will provide extra, extra exa, exabytes of data every day. So now this is the trigger. Uh, the large data set that are being produced, the chunks of data sets, large data sets or big data that are being produced every day uh, waiting for biologists or computational bi or bioinformaticians uh, to actually look through and you know provide the information. That is actually what triggers the interest. You could see how uh, the person coined out the trigger. So and then unfortunately, because these data are so huge, it can be prohibitively expensive to run algorithm on them. In grad school, I would like to find algorithms that help process the data at this massive scale. So uh, uh, they, they, they pointed out the problem and then uh, what they would like to do to solve the problem. So it's actually also following uh, the, uh, the, the concepts I, I, I introduced the other time. So, uh, <clears throat> they talked about uh, how the problem uh, became personally important to them when they entered the next Netflix challenge for a class project with over 100 million moving rating. Uh, any algorithm I implemented took many hours to run, even with 12 gig RAM. That's why I grew frustrated and started dreaming of ways to make big data smaller. I came across paper like Lee et al on conditional random sampling, which convinced me that sketching was a really good idea. I was excited to hear sketching could be used to compute Euclidean distances, since in some, some of the, my algorithm, computing Euclidean, Euclidean distance was the slowest step. So uh, this introduced another dimension to writing uh, the statement of purpose. And this version was using uh, was citing references here. So and using uh, and building on the references to actually make their point to the admission committee. So and it was through throughout the uh, the statement of purpose. And then uh, for the, the last part, the summer before I entered my college. Uh, enter college, my mentor and I modified the bioinformatics to BLAST to better detect similarities between proteins. We did some, we did get some improvements 
at least on the few data sets we, we tried, but we didn't achieve our main goal, which was to look for motor proteins in bacteria. A couple of years later, I did another bioinformatics project at Pro <clears throat> Protabit, where I benchmarked their software against other software. And I did a small project at MIT, where I ran experiments on how people learn words. Stanford is my top choice school because it's a large school with a world-class faculty in a variety of field. This will be good for me because my interests are broad and international in nature. At Stanford, I could apply big data to problems in biology, machine learning, natural language processing, and any field that calls for it, and still get a great advisor. My objective is in pursuing, pursuing a PhD at Stanford is to do good work on interesting problems and eventually become a professor. So this person was able to actually mention uh, why they are applying to Stanford and, and they are also their career objective. So they were able to mention that. So I don't want to bore you with every, uh, all of that thing. And you, as you can see, they also cited, you know, the, the, their references, you know, they, they cited was also here at the end of the, uh, the SOP. So you can see, <laughs> you can see, so it's, when I said, when I said this is not hedged on Zoom, uh, so people, people have several methods. <laughs> so they use. So another one is, is this, uh, that's, uh, it, it's an introduction. Nigeria is the most populous nation in Africa with a population of about 200 million. Uh, we realize the population is rapidly increasing. Food production, such as supply of animal protein, has been diminishing, leading to the increases, increasing crisis of nutritional deficiency, hunger, and malnutrition. Given this problem, there have been uh, government interventions to increase the supply of quality animal protein. One such as one such of intervention has to do with the improving portion of nutritional livestock through the use of genomics. So the tools are recently gaining momentum. So uh, uh, this person introduced the problem, like the problem of uh, inadequate animal protein uh, for human consumption, uh, which has been brought, you know, by many uh, examples. And then <clears throat> what the government had done on that. So what they've done uh, but you've not been so successful uh, regarding that, maybe due to lack of uh, expertise in the field of genetics and genomics. So, you know, this person used this introduction uh, for that. And then uh, they concluded after my MSc in this, I intend to further my research <clears throat> by also applying for a uh, PhD position in genetics and genomics in one of the universities mentioned earlier. A nation is developed when the solid updated with the newest form of technology and research findings. I will take a part, I would like to take part of the research theme for the resuscitation of livestock industry so that I can contribute my fraction to the development of Europe and my country through my outstanding research skills with which this life changing opportunity will have is told on me. So this is another angle uh, where you could actually start and hand your uh, statement of purpose. Then another one we have here uh, is just talking about uh, why the school, why the school, and then then uh, the why the schools, why the program, why the school and why the program. He said, for my aspirations to materialize, Stanford University is a perfect place as it will help me grow scientifically and personally while working and living in a different and diverse environment. Exploring new interests and utilizing meaningful collaboration to contribute to the society. Also, the area of tough faculty working synergistically together and the state of the health facilities like 
the Stanford Genome Center. You, you, can you see what I said when I said mentioning state of the house facility is not enough? You have to make mention what are the state of the house facilities that are in the in the school that you are applying to. So it would enable me enable me to stand on the shoulders of giants to accomplish my goal of improving health and saving lives through the translational skills, uh, research skills with which this set of knowledge will have bestowed on me. In the future, I aspire to become a refined scientist that contributes to this translational study that leads to effective diagnosis and early treatment of cancers with science therapies and less toxic regimen for underserved population. So here, you can see the, 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 the career goal here, uh, uh, from here to here, and then they are not saying that they want to save the world. I want to save the whole world, no. They said, regimen for underserved individuals and population. You have to try to carve out a niche. I, I will talk about the, 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 uh, the consequences of trying to generalize everything at the end of, uh, towards the end of this uh, uh, session. So then they talked about the research, the researchers in the faculty, uh, in the program, whose research interests align with them. And then uh, they also talked about uh, also what, uh, in addition to what they have said, uh, said about their research, what they bring also uh, to improve uh, the program too. So <clears throat> then after this, we want to, I want to thank <laughs> a note of, uh, is it warning? We just uh, admonition that there is no one size fits all. As you can see this guy here. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no one size fits all. So uh, your story is your story. Your experiences are your experiences. Uh, you have a peculiar and unique experience uh, that is different from mine, that is different from the guys of uh, displaced uh, their, their cases, their letters, and you know what is what you've done, uh, how you could actually adopt or adapt uh, what they have done or what you've done to the structure of what they've written. So having said that, I will want to uh, give some general tips of writing uh, this. Uh, I, I hope I've not bored you with my stories. So. You have to start very early. Uh, start very early and plan accordingly. It is very, very important that you start very early. Uh, some people start, uh, I will still talk about that. Some people start very late and be rushing. Uh, they run health or skelter, uh, rush uh, to write their SOP uh, without proper planning and then just submit. Uh, and then <clears throat> afterwards, they start uh, uh, complaining that they keep getting rejections. Uh, it is never done. Uh, those people you see uh, getting uh, scholarships and positions, they have planned accordingly uh, over some periods of some months. Uh, so also, you have to think, think deeply on the purpose of the letter. What is this letter should be portraying? It should be portraying your motivation for the program, for the study, your potential, your capability, your resourcefulness. All these things are supposed to be shown. Also, it is very, very important to strictly follow instruction if given. I've seen so many cases where they gave them word cards. They said not more than 500 words. And someone came to me and said, I've written 900 words. He said, okay, can I submit it like this? I said, 
why 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 would you write 900 words when they've already told you that had air to 500 word cards so you have to, there's no way you could you could you could submit that and and um say you will get a positive result because that tells them something about you that you are not someone that pays attention to details so it is very very important strictly follow instructions when given then also peruse the program religiously the program's website religiously i've had countless of encounters with prospective applicants saying they do not see this i don't know how to get this then I will just go to the website of the program and within one to five minutes, I will find all what they were saying they did not find. So it is very, very important. This journey is uh, it should be an intentional journey. It has to be intentional. You have to be intentional about your journey, your, your, your scholarship journey. Do that. Nobody can do that for you. Nobody can... Can, can can search the programs from, from, from A to Z for you. You have to do the 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 the, the other part, then go uh, reach out to people for help. So when they see that you've done the the, 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 the large part, people will be very, very willing to actually help. But you starting uh, and then saying you did not find this, you did not do this. So and so many people write a uh, statement of purpose uh, without any uh, regards to the program website. Uh, look at the keywords. What are the what are the which word? What are the keywords? What are the hints and objectives of the program? How do you want to key in into those objectives? How do you want to leverage on those on those objectives on those things that they you know? There are keywords on the keywords on the program. How do you want to leverage on that and connect it with your own experience, with your letter, and then amplify your your chances of getting uh, a good decision? Uh, so it is important to peruse the program's website very well. And if you don't have clear information from the website, you can also contact the program's coordinator. Uh, their their contact is, is always given on the on the website. Excuse me. Then you have to develop uh, the letter with fluid transition. What do I mean by that is there must be a flow. You know the ones I have written. You know they start from from the problem and then how they want to contribute. Then they they continue with the experience that will help them to be successful in the program and then go to uh, why they pick the program or why the, 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 the institution is best for them and their career, how they are, it's going to have their career objectives. So you have to, uh, to organize your, there must be a, a connection flow between your, your paragraphs. So you shouldn't, I've read a lot of, uh, I've also done that before. So, you know, disconnected paragraphs that you have to take paragraph three, then go to paragraph two. Then paragraph two, we then go to paragraph four or five. So you have to look at how uh, those paragraphs should, should follow one another. It is very, very important. And then please, and um, please, and um, please, do not plagiarize. It is very, very heinous. It's a heinous crime in the West. And as we do not uh, uh, put a lot of emphasis on it uh, in, our, in most of our places, it's very, very heinous. It could cost one uh, one's career. So, yeah. Then, uh, be yourself, be original, and then show uh, your motivation and your competencies. Uh, don't just say it, show it, demonstrate. You said you you, you are a, a team, a team, uh, you have teamwork 
ability, you know, all those words that we we, we just uh, throw around, try to pick one situation where you demonstrated those abilities. So you don't just see it, yeah? show it, demonstrate it. Then, yeah, like I said, continuity is very, very important. And then reach out to folks, reach out to people for reviews, reach out to people for reviews. It's very, very important to uh, reach out. And then I also want to uh, like uh, give a kind of a, uh, uh, people uh, when they when they reach out to, when when you are applying and you want people to review your 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 the, your letters. Don't send your letter to them when it is already one day, two day, one week, one week even sometimes two weeks to, to the deadline and start pressuring those people you want to, uh, you want them to help you for review. They, they also have, they, they also have their, 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 so many things they, they are also doing. So there was a case I, I did, it won't, it, that time, that one also got, almost got me into trouble. Uh, I sent the thing uh, to the person and said, uh, I said, tomorrow is the deadline, tomorrow is the I said, hey, what, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? So I said, okay, okay. So since then, I never, you know, I give, I, I give people two, two months, three months. So that's the essence of starting early. So if you give them one month, two months, then they won't have excuse uh, to give you that they, they do not have enough time so please also consider people that that review for you uh they have many things to also do and then finally revise 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 uh it is very very important to revise very well uh they don't give a uh, uh what's it called price for people that for submit <laughs> so you only have to uh submit based on either priority deadline or the official deadline. So you have to revise very well. Uh, you can leave the, 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 the letter, come back, leave it, and come back again. So yeah, I have some uh, general tips about graduate school application that I wanted to, to uh, give apart from the statement of purpose. Uh, one is poorly written application materials. Uh, like I said, when I look back at my uh, uh, scholarship journey, there is uh, this, when I, I checked my application to MasterCard Foundation Scholarship uh, for undergraduates when I was in, uh, in, in, in uh, year two in the university, <clears throat> then I laughed. <laughs> so what I wrote there then was rubbish. <laughs> so then I, I, I saw the reason why. <laughs> I was rejected. So you have to, you know, write very well, write legibly, you know, uh, it is very, very important to, to keep that at the back of your mind. Then there is another case of misfired attempt to impress. Uh, one example is, you know, you, you, you are putting down your country or your university, your, your undergraduate university, the lecturers are wicked, uh, they do this, they reduce my math, they are not good, they, don't, they didn't do this. So all these things, uh, they are, they, it leaves the bad taste at the mouth of the uh, reviewing committee. So don't, don't try to attempt to, to impress them uh, by misfiring. It is very, very important. Then, like I said, the program focus. Peruse the program very well. So people don't peruse the program very well. You are applying to uh, plant genetics and you are writing SOP on animal genetics. All sorts of things like that and similar cases like that. Then smelly, spelling and grammatical error is very, very common. And it's one of the things that if you, you, do, you do not do your due diligence while writing your statement of purpose that could hang you in place, in, in, in higher education, then how will you be doing during your research? So 
it's 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 a very very uh bad uh uh bad omen <laughs> so if you have this spelling and grammatical error so here i will advise everyone to make use of the uh, grammar checking uh platforms and programs like grammarly and some other so um some other ones make use of them when you write your personal statement then there is this excessive atrism uh, in which you want to save the whole world like i said before you want to save the whole world i want to i want to give uh, food to the humanity so try to uh not to overblow everything uh, take pick a niche pick a niche uh with your uh pick a niche with your uh with your research interest and the solution you are targeting uh, that one that way it is very very important so it's better than saying you want to uh cure cancer can we have several cancers yeah you have to be specific so how do you want to do that then <clears throat> there is this harmful letter of recommendation so i used to tell people i also have a story when i was in germany where i was applying for a phd i started applying for phd position uh, by the time i finished my first year of masters so because my masters my masters program is two years so i started applying after shortly after i finished the first year so then i reached out to someone to write a, le a recommendation letter for me i said okay i can write it for you we are uh, go and uh, like drop uh, a draft i wrote the draft and the person was like they edited a lot of things, which I said, okay, you edited this, you edited that. Can I supply you my CV so that you you see what I'm saying is <laughs> it's not <laughs> there's a, there's no need for CV. Then I said, okay, this person will write a very harmful letter of recommendation for me, so it is better I do not use them. So try to look at people who want to write the recommendation letter for you. So if 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 you have people that says you you should write them so write something very good for yourself uh review it review it before you you send to them so if you know those you you have people that do not allow you to do that uh try to uh uh know if what they are writing to you in a respectful way uh, uh if they could write a very strong just tell them you have to be explicit, but in a respective way, respectful way. That uh, would you be able to write a very strong and competitive letter of recommendation for me? Because I've seen cases where people just, you know, one of <clears throat> the lecturers just wrote like one paragraph or two lines. I uh, know these guys are working. Is, <laughs> what is the meaning of all this? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, very. Yeah, uh, uh, it's it tells a lot. Yeah. You know, application it carries a, a a lot of weight. So I, I've seen a situation where uh, a recommender say, "No, oh, I do not really know the guy. I don't know his capability." Then why did you write the recommendation letter? <laughs> do you get my point? Why did you write the recommendation letter when you don't know the guy? So all those things, please don't don't choose people that will, that will be saying all the, all those things on your on your letter yes, um, yes. anymore. So it is very very important. And those then, are people are very desperate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you don't have to be desperate. <laughs> you are very desperate. You don't have a good relationship with your lecturers. Yeah. So I mean, you need the recommendation letter tomorrow. You are now messaging the professor that has not collected. <laughs> Salary for the past eight months. So exactly. what do you expect from them? Exactly. That's that's actually what I'm saying. Like also, yeah. Let, let me just go back. Keep a very very good 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 relationship with your lecturers. Don't don't let it be that when when you when you, it is when you want to uh, start application as you will be calling the uh, prof. Please, uh, I have some application you will help me with. No, it shouldn't be like that. 
you should be contacting them from time to time just to check on them. Even if you don't give them, give them anything. Merely calling them and, you know, checking on their health, you know, just discussing generally with them will, will give them some, some joy. Like, okay. And then by the time you, you want to apply, you say, ah, by so, so, so time, I will be applying to these, these, these applications. I hope you will be helped. They will be very, very happy to help you. They will just badge in. Uh, Hello, professor. It's been a while. I want to apply. Ah. You know, they will say, ah, you're going to be late. Go, Where are you coming from? It's, it's, it's not done. So please try and keep a very, very good relationship. And for those people who are still in the university, please, if you don't, if you don't have that kind of relationship with the lecturers now, go and start having it. Just start discussing with them, discussing issues, you know, related to topics in your field and all the lives, and then sharing your, your future ambitions with them. Then with that, when you want to start application, it will be easy for you to, to go to them and then they will be happy, they will be happy to help you. So yeah, so and um, have you all adhered to the whole due diligence and how what we talked about today? Uh, you should be able to do like this at the end of your uh, when the decision comes out. <laughs> so, yeah, <clears throat> so a brief recap we did uh, the definition and explanation on the SOP and then talked about the similarities and differences. And then the we had some session with steps by steps and some case studies, generatives, and uh, pieces of death in uh, graduate school uh, application. Yeah, so after this session, I hope you've gained one or two things and your SOP should look like this at the end of the day. <laughs> so uh, thank you all uh, for your time. I will be uh, willing to take some questions now. Okay, thank you very much, sir. We are very grateful for this great uh, lecture. I hope people will really enjoy this um, webinar. So uh, um, our great speaker is person of scholar and scholar Sumato Adidas has already made justice to this topic, writing statement of purpose for graduate school's application. What we need to know about the SOP difference between SOP and also the basic structure of how your SOP should be like. Now that you should have your uh, career goal at the first, your aim at the second, it should be well aligned and structured. And also you talk about the recommendation letters and also a good recommender. Please, I just want to share this with everyone of us that is watching us right now, a vast letter of recommendation. Please and please don't be with the spirit. Uh, last year, when I was applying for my graduate school application, I tried to use some professors and also some people as my recommenders. But well, fortunately, when I was trying to check through the application process, I applied to different schools in the US. So they are keeping submitting a recommendation letter for me. But when it's done to some uh, scholarship like the Erasmus Mundus Scholarship, there are some scholarship that I need to submit the recommendation letter by myself. <laughs> I can't believe when I request for the recommendation letter from one of the recommender, the recommendation letter is nothing to talk about. <laughs> so seriously, I was the even there was a mistake on the letter ID paper and also my name. So <laughs> I was just checking, I feel like crying that day that I've used the recommendation letter to more than 15 schools in the United States. Hmm. So you need to have a good uh, rapport with them and don't use a professor or a doctor that has already updated that does not really know how this thing goes. Hmm. Even if the person is even a lecturer two or a lecturer one, that's know how this thing works, that can, can, that can write a good and let's say a perfect recommendation letter for you is better compared using to a, uh, let's say, an emeritus professor. That does not really matter. So the next thing right now should be the question 
and answer section. Please, if you have any question and answer, kindly drop it to our comment section on the YouTube. So the first question here, okay, let me try to check the question and answer. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. The first question, let me just first ask for the first question. This person sent this personally to me. The person is asking that, can you just briefly de uh, differentiate between an a SOP and a cover letter? Difference between SOP and a cover letter. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> that, that's a great question. So shortly, <clears throat> A cover letter uh, is not as well detailed as an SOP. SOP is much, let, let, let me say, it's a much more larger uh, uh, type of cover letter. And cover letter, the, 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 how it differs is, you know, you are actually directing it to a particularly advertised position. <clears throat> So it's it's an advertised position that you are particularly ad, uh, uh, addressing the cover letter to, so which is going to be about the introduction about the uh, uh, the position, how you got to know about the position, and then your what you are bringing to the table, and how the program is going to help you. Then you can you can just uh, conclude like that. So. You can see the structure. So introduction, how you got to uh, your introduction, how you got, about, got to know about the uh, adverts or the position. And then what you are bringing to the table, uh, I mean, your experiences like we discussed earlier. And then, then conclusion. So why the SOP is this long structure that you see? So I think I uh, am able to, uh, make okay, thank you very much. Yes. The, the second question goes does. Uh, this question is from another scholar. He was asking that, assuming this university did not give us a page limit for our SOP, you just write, okay, write, submit a well-detailed SOP. What should be the number of page, or be, what should be the limit for a normal SOP? Um, from my whole, yeah, let me, let me tell you another story about myself. So when I was, the time I was improving, you know, I was improving with my writing and all the lives. There was a time I wrote like three and a half page for a letter of motivation. And my reviewer, the, the person that reviewed for me said, no, 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 you want to bore all these people. <laughs> you want to bore these people? No, you, you shouldn't be like that. So even if they don't give you uh, some limits, my own recommendation would be uh, to be two pages max, mm -hmm. two pages or two pages and some few lines on the third page. So that should be max. From my own recommendation, some people might have some differing opinions as to that. But you should, in those two pages, you should be able to communicate your 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 ideas, the your your motivations and all the likes, uh, and why you are a good fit for the program within those two pages. That's for my own uh, own take. That's my own take on that. So you shouldn't be going ahead because you are you are, you are set free. Then you start writing. Uh, five pages, you know. <laughs> so who has the time? They only have some fractions of time to decide whether they should uh, proceed ahead with your application or not. Okay. Yeah. So another question from Paul Halabi. Please give us a tips on how to edit a single SOP to suit more than one application to different schools. <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> yeah, so uh, it depends, it depends. If the program you are applying to in those different schools is the same 
For example, we are applying to genetics, 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 uh, the Stanford genetics, you know, and some other schools like that. We are applying to genetics program. So that's where you can use, and even not everything, because like I said before, different program has their own peculiar issues. Hmm? Their aims and objective, their key words, and what they are looking for, what they what they set the program how to, to, to achieve. So you have to streamline and then adapt to some changes as with regards to, uh, you might use, uh, if the same, you might use the introduction and then, you know, uh, your experience might not, you will not change. Then, but when you are talking about the program, the university, what it has to offer for you and some other things like that, then you have to, you know, be specific. And that's one of, it's, it's very good you brought up the question. That's one of the things that people also, also do. They just, you know, copy and paste everything, pa, 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 pa. And then even they will not, they will not even edit the name of the university. <laughs> they, 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 the admission committee then tend to see them say, these guys are not serious. So try to, you know, schools we have different, uh, uh, what's it called, specs. So you have to adapt those areas, the research uh, lines, the people, the faculty, the facilities, and some other things, the program structures, and, you know, how uh, they, they, are, they are going to be differ, different. So that's for sure. So I think that should answer the question. Okay. okay. Another question from another scholar is saying that, okay, I think I understand this person's question from WhatsApp. The person um, studied in chemistry at the university level, level and also studied in science laboratory technology at the handy level. But what he really did during his uh, undergraduate study for his project is not something that is really interesting or something that is really presentable. But what he did during the, his ND was very interesting. So the guy is now asking, is it possible for him to buttress much on what he did during his ND project, national diploma project, compared to what he did during his bachelor project? Uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, no denying the fact that, you know, sometimes you might have some challenging situation uh, that, you know, the quality of the work you do uh, would not be that uh, much. But uh, the advice I will have for the person is, first, I also had an ending, as you will see from my profile, Yes. So I used to talk about my ND project, the my bachelor project, and you know all my projects that I've got involved in. So uh, what you could do is just you know, like I said before, if even if it's not that great, there are some things that you've learned from there that you could actually write about. That's what I'm saying. So you could explicitly talk about the research you did at the ND level and talk briefly about what you did at the bachelor level and emphasizing on the skills you were able to gain from there. So, and you know, maybe you transferred, that was transferred to some other places. So that, that would be my my answer to the question. Okay, so, so I think we still have some question left here. So another question is that, is it necessary for someone to give a full details or let's explain better pertaining to his research experience that he or she wrote on the CV and explain more when writing his or her SOP? Uh, as you could see from the from the <clears throat> uh, from the examples I I showed, uh, people talked about. Uh, their research experience. Uh, the first guy talked explicitly about the research and the second person briefly talked about what they did. Uh, 
the motivation for the study, uh, the methods, how the, the research was done, the research they got, and the application or the implication of the of the study. That's if you follow that stru concept or the structure, you should be able to uh, deliver your 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 main message uh, without uh, using too much uh, space on the SOP. Okay. So I think this question should be another. I'm coming. Okay. Okay. So um I think we don't have much question here. People have already answered their question. But I think I still want to ask a question pertaining to something like um application fee waiver in the US and also some school offer application fee waiver and some school did not offer application fee waiver but they ask you to pay for application fee. So pertaining to this and uh, hunting for scholarship, especially PhD scholarship in US, is it much, let's say much, is it a good idea to just focus much on schools that offer free application, application fee waiver that's okay use this code, you this, use this code. Because we are not doing us. Yeah, I can understand. So it's, uh, what I will say is uh, uh, first, the scholarship journey uh, is a, a deliberate and international, it should be a, a deliberate and intentional one and should be it's an investment. You invest your time, efforts, even money. So what I will say is one, uh, target schools, you know, that are research-based universities. Uh, you wouldn't want a case where you go to, a, uh, to an institution. So that's, you know, <clears throat> I'm not talking about ranking now. I'm talking about even ranking matters in some aspects. But is it, there is something called R1 and R2 yeah. universities. Yes. Target R1 universities, they are research-based and most of them are very top schools in the US. Target them and then attend, what is it called? Uh, for, for myself, I paid some application fees. Uh, but most of them, I don't pay. I paid some, but most I didn't pay. Like, I, I could say like 80% of the applications I, I did free. Only some 20% I paid. So you should also have in mind that there are ones that you, could, you will pay if you think that program is a good fit for you. It's not a matter, it shouldn't be a matter of uh, money uh, is the program a good fit for you? Uh, are you going to get what you want with the program? If that is the case, you should you, you can find one way or the other uh, to get the money. And there are several ways you can also get, uh, what's it called? Application fee waivers, like attending webinars, the, the course, uh, uh, graduate fair of many schools, you know, sending mails to program coordinators or admission committee, you know, expressing uh, your, your, what is it called for the program, your love for the program as being your dream program where you are financially constrained and give your reasons and give the reason why the program is a, uh, what the program could do for you and how you will be able to actually give back. So briefly and then send, uh, to ask for a fee waiver for the program. So most do give, and if they, if they do not give, so I think you should uh, target ways or uh, try to uh, find ways to, to actually pay some of the application fees. Yeah, because it's like you, you are investing in your future. 
Okay. All right. This question is from Afiz Aziz. Okay. What should be my main focus in my SOP? Suppose I'm changing my career from one feed to another. Yeah, so that's a very good question. So when you are changing career, so from one field to another, uh, the uh, the focal point of the uh, SOP should be why, <laughs> why, why, why are you changing? Then, for example, why are you changing from agriculture to human genetics? Uh, where are you changing from? You know, what are the reasons? What's, what's influenced your decisions? And what have you done in, to make sure that you've eaten rightly into the program? Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if, you, if the person understands what I'm saying now. So why, why the change? Then what's influenced your decisions? What are the things that influence your decision? And what are the things that you've been doing to, to prepare yourself uh, to make you a good fit into the program you want to apply to? So I think that should answer the question. Okay. I think after this, uh, we are going to take two or three more questions so that we are going to end in the webinar for today. Another question, why are you using an SOP model? This question is for another person. Why use an SOP model? I ended up writing about four pages of my own copy with no irrelevant parts that could be removed. My question is that what do you think that I can do in this regard? And how many paragraphs would you recommend? I have just six paragraphs that run into the four page literary. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I've been I've been I've been in this uh, <clears throat> this situation uh, uh, too. Uh, but one of the things you have to take note is uh, uh, I will recommend a course on Coursera too. Uh, it is called Writing in the Sciences. It is very it is a very very good uh, course if you can take it. So, one of the things that I learned from there is, you know, we use some, you know, some words, some fluffy words, you know, some, you know, that are then done. <laughs> so, you have to cut what we call the clutters. Cut the clutters. You have to cut the clutters from your... You will see, you will see, if you look very well, I've, I've written something of such before. I said, oh, I don't think I can remove anything. I don't think I can remove that. There are some words that you can actually strip and we still keep the same meaning, interpretation of what you meant with, oh, like four, five, seven um, sentences. So you have to cut the clutters. There are some words that are not really necessary that you are using. So you have to cut the quarters. Then here is where we also introduce uh, keyboards. Uh, keyboards will also help you in spinning your word, shortening them, and then you know, still you can use your own uh, what's it called to to also uh, uh, to make it to your taste. So it is very very important. You you just need to cut the quarters, and it will still make sense to still make. Uh, uh, give the same meaning of what you meant from the four paragraph uh, for the four pages you, you wrote the other time. I think with this we have come to the end of this section for today. So thank you very much, and scholar Sumakadidas, for this great lecture. I pray the Almighty God grant you the best in this life and hereafter. So he has already made justice to write his statement of purpose for graduate school's application. So if you are still sleeping right now, I think the graduate school application has already commenced fully for the people that are going to the United States of America and the fall 2023 application is even going to end by December. Some schools application has already closed. 
So just try to put your application forward. I think some people are even ask, asking for your mail. Or uh, how can they contact you? This can you give out your mails uh, or any way they can contact you? Okay. Yeah, I can give out my mail, but there is a <laughs> uh if it's for review, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm already swamped with review. Okay, I, I, I can I think I you should give it out there. <laughs> I, no, I I can I can still give it out, but if it's for review, uh, I okay. may not be able to do anything uh, through to December. Okay. So it's only towards the end of December I can start working on new uh, reviews. Wow. So I can still give it out. So okay, okay. Can you just? Okay. And my names together, then with uh, <coughs> with this. Okay. Okay. All right. For those of you that are asking for his mail, I think you can mail it, mail him through the email. So if you have any question, so this is the end of this today's webinar. Please, if you have any question for each ISF or now we can improve our platform, you can message us. You can message us on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and also you can contact the admin. So thank you very much, Scholar Sumato Adidas. Thank you very much. So we are going to end this section right now. Please kindly subscribe to this channel, please. Okay.